everybody, welcome back to NeuroPsyQ for another week's episode. Today we're going to be talking about COVID-19, specifically we're going to be talking about some possible new symptoms for the virus. If you've been keeping up with the news, you know that the number one symptoms of COVID so far are coughing and fevers. But recently patients have begun to report loss of the sense of smell and loss of their sense of taste as well. So keep in mind that none of our videos are medical advice and none of our videos are supposed to be used as diagnostic tools. But today we are going to be talking about how the symptoms of loss of taste and loss of smell might be coming about because of COVID-19. So stay tuned to figure out why this might be happening. Alright, let's get started. First off, let's discuss the basic neural pathways for the sense of smell and for the sense of taste. For smell, which is also known as olfaction, and taste, these are both chemical senses. So what we have happening is there are chemicals when we smell things, these chemicals are floating around in the room, or if you're tasting something, the chemicals get dissolved in your saliva and those bind to receptors on your tongue. So both of them kind of work in similar ways. Both start by the activation of a chemoreceptor. A chemoreceptor is a type of receptor that binds to a chemical, chemoreceptor, and once it's bound, that will activate the neuron to send a signal. So we have a chemical coming in, binding to the receptor, the receptor activates the neuron, to depolarize and those send signals down a pathway. Now the way the pathway works in the nose is first we bind to those chemoreceptors inside our nasal passages and that goes down the olfactory pathway. So what happens is we come in on the olfactory receptors, it goes to the olfactory bulb and then from the olfactory tract the signal is sent to limbic areas of the brain which remember are highly emotional and also higher order cortical regions for processing. So if you didn't understand that, basically all you need to know is a signal is binding to a receptor in your nasal passages and then our brain figures out the rest. For taste, what happens is a very similar thing except these aren't just floating around in the air, these would be chemicals on your food. Those chemicals bind to receptors on your tongue, we know that we have taste buds, but these receptors are kind of all over your tongue. That causes activation of that neuron, and it goes down a very similar pathway into the brainstem and then into the higher order of cortical regions, where it is processed in an area called the gustatory cortex. Gustation is just another word for taste, so we have processing of the flavors in that area of the brain. These senses are very strongly connected and if you've ever tried to eat something while you're plugging your nose, you'll probably notice that a lot of the flavor is gone and then when you unplug your nose, it returns. So losing the sense of smell could in turn make you feel like you've lost your sense of taste as well. But how many people are actually experiencing anisomnia, which is loss of the sense of smell, and dysugepsia? which is loss of the sense of taste with COVID-19. Well, COVID-19 is a novel virus, and so all of the data that we have isn't really solid yet. But this app that was made by scientists, doctors, and professors at King's College London has reports that 59% of the patients who test positive for COVID-19 have also reported symptoms of anisomnia and dysugepsia. So 59% of these positive patients are losing their sense of smell and their sense of taste. Now this app was made by Dr. Tim Spector, who is a genetic epidemiologist at the university. And basically what it is, is an app that they've tried to create to help monitor symptoms 
while our health care is under this extreme burden. So rather than having doctors ask all these questions, it's kind of a self-report thing. So the accuracy of it can be questionable, but we have multiple cases where patients are reporting this, so why might it be happening? Could it just be a psychological thing? Because somebody said that they don't, they can't smell anything, then the next person is like, oh my gosh, I don't think I can smell anything either. It could, but there are other reasons why this might happen. Dr. Stephen Munger, who works at the University of Florida at the Center for Smell and Taste, suggests three possible reasons why people might be losing their senses with COVID-19. The first reason is a reason why you might lose your sense of smell and taste with just the common cold, and that is your nasal passage is swelling. Now, when we have a virus or when you are sick, we have inflammation because this is an immune response. So in response to the infection of the virus, we might have swelling of our nasal passages as we try to fight it off. Now, what can this mean? Well, the chemicals floating around in the air can no longer get to the receptors in your nose. And so, you lose your sense of smell because we no longer have neural firing in these areas. Now with that, again, that could be like you plugging your nose and the sense of taste, the loss of the sense of taste, might not be directly from loss of sensation or loss of response of the neurons in your tongue. What might actually be happening is a reduction in the sensation because of the loss of your sense of smell. It's just a common thing, the two go hand in hand. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is infection of the olfactory cells could be happening, which prevents transmission. So rather than it just being swelling that's preventing the molecules from binding to the receptor, perhaps the receptor cells are the ones that are actually getting infected. If you have an infected receptor cell, these cells aren't going to be responding to the chemicals in the environment. So if the virus is actually getting into those cells, that could be the reason why these patients are losing their sense of smell. Now if we critically think about this, the first option is the most plausible, but this option is also likely. Now, just a little review on how this virus is working. The virus is binding to receptors on the outside of the cell that we already have, and it hijacks that receptor to get itself into the cell, and then it basically corrupts the whole cell. If you want to think of it, it's kind of hacking the cell and using the cell for its own reproductive purposes. So on its own, a virus cannot replicate. Once the virus gets into our cell, it uses all our cell's tools to replicate itself. If that cell is being used to replicate a virus, the cell is not going to be responding to sensation or to things going on in your body in a normal way. Now the reason why this virus is affecting our lungs so much is because the way it's getting into our cells is through a receptor that is found in high density on our lung cells. Whether or not these receptors are also found on the neural cells in our nose is a total other question, but it could be possible. So that is another possibility that Dr. Stephen Munger suggested. The third possibility seems a little far-fetched to me, but it is an option. And this one is that the infection is actually getting right into the brain. Now, in the article that I was reading that made this suggestion, they actually cited another journal article that supported the idea, but upon reading the journal article, I realized that the study that was done didn't fully support this idea. The fact that the virus would get into the brain would mean that it would somehow have to get through the blood-brain barrier, or somehow infect the neurons in our brain. And our brain is highly protected, everything that goes in is highly filtered, so I find it unlikely that the virus would get in. But in a study that was done on rats with the SARS virus, they showed that when the virus gets into the brain, it can cause neuronal loss and necrosis, which 
makes sense because we have a virus hijacking the neurons and using all their tools for things other than maintenance of the neuron and normal functioning of the neuron. But in the study, the rats were directly injected with this virus intracranially, so it got directly into the brain. All I'm saying is that I wouldn't choose this as my first choice for why patients are losing their sense of smell and their sense of taste. Now also, in these rats in the study, they were transgenic because rats don't have the same receptors on their cells as we do. So these rats were modified so that they did have the human ACE2 receptor. The ACE2 receptor is the one that SARS binds to and it's also the one that COVID-19 binds to. So with this modification, they would have these receptors on their cells, which allows the virus to enter the cell. But with that being said, again, these are transgenic animals. So we don't know if the expression of the receptor is going to be the same as it would be in a human being. So that's something else you have to be keeping in mind. You always got to be critical, especially in these times with COVID-19, with all the information that's being thrown at you. Make sure you think about what's being said before you just acknowledge it as the truth. On that note, I want to just talk a little bit about the ACE2 receptor. Again, I said that it's found in high density in lung tissue, and that is because what the ACE2 receptor does, it's part of this renin-angiotensin system. The renin-angiotensin system is involved with raising blood pressure. So what happens is we basically, if your blood pressure is too low, that's bad. I know a lot of times we hear about high blood pressure being the problem, but too low, that's bad. You can go into shock, your body won't be getting enough blood throughout it. What happens is we have this molecule called renin being released from the kidney. And circulating through us all the time is another molecule, angiotensin. Basically, it gets cleaved and then it has to get cleaved again. ACE is angiotensin cleaving enzyme. So it cleaves it and activates it. ACE2 is an enzyme that cleaves angiotensin 2 and shuts down the system. So this is a molecule to stop us from raising our blood pressure. It's found in the lungs because our blood will circulate through the lungs to get oxygen. So all the blood in our body is going to go through these capillaries and we can work on raising our blood pressure or lowering our blood pressure based on the enzyme activity in our lungs. So because of this receptor being found in our lungs, and because this is the receptor that the COVID virus binds to, that's the location that most, that is the reason why the infection is impacting our lungs the most. We do have these receptors in the central nervous system, but again, like I said, it's a question of whether or not the virus can get access to our central nervous system. So I would say that the most likely reason why people are losing their sense of smell and taste could be inflammation in the nose as an immune response. But with that being said, recently, so actually just two days ago on April 1st and on March 31st, some articles were released in which individuals are having abnormal nervous system responses and testing positive to COVID-19. So we've seen things like seizures, we've seen things like encephalopathy, in which patients come in confused, um, and we've also seen stroke-like symptoms with COVID-19. Next week's video, we're going to talk about this a little more, but because this is new information, I just want to put it out there for now, let you look into it too a little bit, and I'm going to do some more research so we can talk about that next week and talk about why the virus might be causing seizures in some patients, why it might be causing stroke-like behaviors, and why one patient actually came in in a complete state of confusion. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope that helped to clear up some of the confusion about why these symptoms might be arising. Again, we don't know for sure, those are just some suggestions, take it with a grain of salt, and stay tuned for next week's video, make sure you stay healthy, and stay home.
Thanks for watching.